Well, last episode we were just checking out a few art sites around the base of Montague Sound, and in this one we're just rounding Wollaston Island and we're going to look at a place called Swift Bay. Alright, so we're just cleaning this morning's catch. Uh, we've got the heads set to one side. I can see a shark cruising around on the sounder, so we're going to pop the heads over on a rope as soon as I get this fishy slime off me. And we'll see if we can have a little shark feed for breakfast. What an oyster. What an oyster. They're under there. They're all under the crevice. Mm. Alright, so this is what all the, the mud flat food gatherers will be wearing this year, so take note. What have you got there, Pascal? The mussels. Ooh, Quite mussels. Size too. Yep. Down here. Let's have a look here. Hmm, not bad. What else? Cockles. Big ones. Big cl almost clams. They are almost clams. So I think we can take them back to the boat. We might hang them in the, a net just overnight to get the mud out of them. We've got a whole, I've got a whole pile of them over there. So a very large part of what, uh, what enables us to sort of free range, and by that we mean just head out into the wilderness for extended periods, like two, three, four months. Um, is gathering food. And here's about a 45 minute effort. Um, on Pascal's behalf, she's been finding these cockles in the mud flats, so little clams, really tasty little bivalve. She's got these um, and this container as well. The oysters that we've been getting are these large black lips. So you can see that that's a, that's a hell of an oyster. Um, rather than take the shells back, We've just just gathered a few just in here. We really like to to crumb and fry them, a um, little Tabasco sauce. So if you're hunting and gathering, there's no need to do it badly. Here's Pascal with another bit of a haul. And these mussels as well, we've only just really turned onto these and spotted them, but a little bit of chili mussels might go might go a long way. The tide's heading on, heading on in now. Um, and yesterday, when we were coming past here, this is the exact spot that we saw a fairly reasonable crocodile sort of slide into the water. So, it's just when you're getting something to eat in this country, it's relatively easy, but it's relatively easy to end up as someone else's dinner as well. So, something to be careful of. Puts a bit of a damper on breakfast being murdered by a crocodile. A lot of the time, we're not only free range, but we're barefoot sailors. But this is not the place for it. This is just barnacles, sharp shells, you name it. Everything here could lead to um, pretty serious infection. The answer to that is these. So a company called Barda makes steel cap boots made of PVC. And they've got a really good sole. Uh, once upon a time I used to be a pearl diver and we used to run around on the bottom with these. They actually did have ones with a, a hard plate in the sole as well, so stonefish. Uh, weren't such a threat, but these are these are really great for running around in mangroves, um, 
kicking rocks when you don't want to break your toe, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, $35 I think they cost. Pretty good. Pascal likes to combine yoga with food collection. You can see here she's doing some sort of bizarre stretch. And I'm about to put the camera down and sort of carry my weight a bit. Hang on, okay, show us what you what This you is an of. example of an alive one, like it's sitting halfway, it's tried to go in but it's obviously hit a rock and it can't go any further to hide in the mud. Yep. And that's it, it's shut. And so these these were overwhelmingly represented in the Aboriginal middens that we've seen. Here's in a the muscle caves. here. Oh yeah, look at that. Great. So this is a relatively easy way to get a feed yeah. and when we were looking at art caves um, we did find middens and there's middens all over northern Australia that are years, years old and they're huge. Um, so these represent an easy and important food source to the, to the traditional inhabitants here. Yeah. A lot of people are looking for the secret to happiness whether it's meditation or religion or whatever but I'll tell you these big oysters in panko breadcrumbs, shallow fried, uh, probably the shortest track to happiness. So that's what we're doing today. So we've just got some panko breadcrumbs. We've just drained them a bit, coat them back, uh, wash them in salt water. Those breadcrumbs look like they're sticking pretty good. Look how big those oysters are. They are pretty big. We got a we got a special midget in with small hands just to make them look impressive. Mm. So while we're doing this, we've also got our cockles and mussels in a net bag over the side and all the local bait fish that are living under the boat are perusing them and, and grabbing all the little organisms that are coming off it, which is a bit of a show. Yeah. We're just hoping the two sharks don't get a taste for it and just tear off with our net bag. Yeah, that would be really bad. Whoa, there's a big one. Look at that. That's like a big, juicy That's an oyster steak, steak, isn't it? Look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So we really like this with Tabasco sauce once they're fried, don't we? Yeah. Alright, well let's get these ones on first while I do the rest. Oh, look at them. Six at a time, eh? You don't want to overcrowd so. it. So, they're out of the oil onto the colander here to drain. And as usual, we're not waiting. <laughs> So good. Mm. So big. Mm. So Pascal just found a uh, found a pearl in her oyster, so that's something to be careful of. Here's half the plate left. We've long since run out of lime and lemon, but um, a dash of sumac over the top gave it that little bit of zing. Going the way out. No, I was just enjoying watching it. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, this is brilliant. There's lots of art here. Oh, yeah, I can just see it over your shoulder. <sighs> I think we might have come the tricky way. Look, <laughs> down there's the viewing way. <laughs> oh, that's Ooh, great. Nice. That's got like the yellow colouring in it, which is really cool. The yellow and the red and the orange. So this is a great spot because it's been really sheltered. Mm. That's that's plenty Bradshaw in there. Mm. So you see all the spears are that same thing, that same style of thing, a stick with a barb. Mm. Yes, here, there, there. Plenty of it. You're talking about like this spear and this spear. Yeah. This person's got like ears, a hat or something, I don't know. Looks like hieroglyphics. And there's a lot. I'm going to get down so I can see the yeah, whole thing. I think thing. it's better at the bottom. I think this is just for the artist access, but you're supposed to look at it down there. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't this, quite see Marul. This is not a sailing day. Yeah. <laughs> <It's flat. laughs> Standard. So what we've got all of this. 
All right. So what we think the storyteller's been up here, he's doing mm. a little bit of a thing. It's hard to get to. There's a lot that's really great stuff. What's going on down here? Look. <laughs> Someone's had a bit of a go in the past. Maybe there's people practicing. Maybe this is the kids section again. Yeah. You're not allowed to go up onto the main platform. It looks like there's more under here as well. Or just a cave. This is the wine cellar. Hmm. It's gonna be always look like, oh just put your hands here, but you might put on some art. It's gonna be kind of sketchy. Oh yeah, this is a big cave under here as well. No wonder there's so much art back there. Mm. No, yeah, this is a shelter in the wet and the soaking. We often see middens that are quite dispersed, but this one we've put Pascal next to this one just to show you the height of it. I mean, that is, that's a lot of feasting. And Pascal's not a short woman. She's king, queen of the midden. Queen of the midden. Don't tell me you're a king. I just ruin everything about our relationship. So we've got this big midden here and there's a cave behind. What do you think we're going to find in the cave, Pascal? Oh, maybe some art. <laughs> maybe some art. Let's go have a look. So again, this cave's got a few sacred figures. Uh, we can't really just go willy-nilly with the camera, but this looks like someone's gone and had a bit of a crack at a crocodile up here. Possibly some mussels, hard to tell. Quite a bit of work here done in white. Some fish, all sorts of things. We've got some, some hands sprayed in. And as a long time duck lover, uh, I'm, very, duck. I'm very, very much loving this one. Yeah. We have seen a few whistle ducks. Yeah. This one looks like it's got a tear in its eye. Smaller than mine, somewhere in the middle. Goldilocks handprint. So this fig tree is showing there's quite a bit of moisture coming down through these rocks and we can see that there's a lot of mould, mildew. So subsequently, no rock art here. Or if there was any, it's overgrown now by chemical deposits, lichens or moulds. So this is just the thing. We're really close to some productive mud flats. You've got some nice multi-level sitting areas. Um, and it's comfortable out of the weather and it's dry. So this is exactly, exactly what we would look for for art. Wallaby poo. <laughs> Wallaby poo. So there's some there, the flaking of the rock has taken that out, so that's quite old. We move under here. You can see some more art quite clearly there. So, I think there's a few different editions of dugongs. There's some some Bradshawy looking stuff here, or even copies of them. Then there's what looks like it might be a dugong, and there's even more uh, further there. So I think there's been a few attempts, but I think someone really mastered it someone down there. We can see that this dugong's got whiskers, mm. a mouth. Is it bearing young, or are these suckerfish that hang around with remoras? Just in here. Really good flat tail, that's that's really dugong -y. This one here is a lot more stylized. Mm. What do you think she's doing? Looks like she's doing something that person. Why do you think it's a she? I don't know. Shape of the body. Just the shape of the body, a little bit of a pear shape. Yeah. This guy's got a bit of a television head. 
That looks like a bow, like that, arrows that in a looks bow. A lot like. And it looks like a Bradshaw as well. Yeah, but I mean, you can say that that would be a barbed spear and boomerang resting yeah. aside. Yeah, true, some barbed spears. Good, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with a spear and a boomerang. Prime real estate. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, so many shells. So, this has been the site of a lot of feasting and good times. So what are you, what's going on here, Pascal? Well, we've just found some like really, really old Bradshaws here. Oh, they're the ones with, uh, looks like they've got decorations off the elbows and off the waist, yeah? Yeah, and they've got their big long headpieces on. Yep. There's another big one here as well. So these ones haven't been painted over, but a lot of the other Bradshaws, or the Gion Gions, yeah. they do get painted over. Yeah. Or chipped away off the rock, or... What's for dinner? Mussels and cockles. We're going to start a little midden shell all of our own. Mm. So. That we collected ourselves in a delicious stew with beans and lentils, onion. Beans and lentils. We've run out of taters. Mm. So now we're into the legumes. Mm. Happy birthday, doll. We drunk the beer. Well, apart from a couple of bottles that are still getting cold. That I managed to find at the back of the shelf, but yeah. That um, that next beer's got a lot of promise, so it's really hard. I think it's going to be well carbonated and delicious. Mm. Some of them have been well carbonated and delicious. Some of them have been Pretty flat, flat and delicious. But I think that one's going to be a winner. Mm. Yep. But in the meantime, because we finished the beer and the other beer's warm, what are you drinking there? This is brandy and spring water. In any other setting, that would probably sound sophisticated. <laughs> but we're on a $28,000 30-foot yacht. So, but it is spring water. <laughs> it's Kimberley spring water. This and is very exclusive. Five years aged brandy. Yeah, it's got VSOP written on it somewhere, I'm sure. It does. Has it? Yeah. And and we don't really it's drink. Eight. Like we were just we just figured that we haven't drunk this much in since X Mouth probably. Yeah. So. In my 44 years, I've never had, I've never touched a drop. <laughs> Whatever. So this is this is tough going. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to need some bait strips, so we're going to make up some more sold bait strips and maybe even throw out a live bait. So we've got Pascal on the case here, the Sabiki jig. Show us what it's all about, Pas. Drop it down. Oop. Oop. <laughs> That's it, you'll have them. Mm, things are a bit crazy down there. Up. Triple hookup. Bait. <laughs> bait. The best bait there is. Yeah, pretty little things related to Trevally. Supply of coals. Coals. This is actually a. It's ready to go under. The problem with this driftwood is it wasn't hard enough to generate a good bed of hard coals. Hmm. Bit too dried out. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Is our sauce in there? Mmm. 
Russell's in there. Fire. Troy prodding the fire. You put the cockles in first because they take longer to open up. Got a nice thick shell. Put the lid back on. They need the steam. Don't want too much more of the black mm. I'm throwing in the mussels now. It's exciting. They're heavy, I think. Oh. oh, stirring with the broken beach stick. This is what happens when you're really adverse to dishes. Oh, that pippy's... Mm. Cockle, pippy. Cockle, Mmm, it's eating on the job. <laughs> I'm gonna put the lid on. <laughs> There's the result. And... Delicious, nice and fluffy, not too cooked. That is, woo, that is it's hot. Mm -hmm.